Okay, most of us in this classroom are about 18 to 20 years. Most of us. <laughs> so at this age, it's where you decide um, what career you want to pursue or if you want to get married, or if you want to move out from your parents' house. One of the dis hardest decisions we had to make is whether to have or not have children. So um, I've, I've had a lot of friends that are my age. They are having children at a young age, and it's pretty hard for them to take care of their children because they try to have a career, they have to uh, work, they have to feed their children, and they have to feel the, uh, feed the, themselves. Even for me, it's hard to take care of myself. And I can't imagine taking care of a little person. So, <laughs> um, oh, I really think that people should not have children right now, at this point of your age. And even, it, it will be very helpful if you can't have children at all. And I, <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna tell you why. Um, I'm going to tell you because of educational reasons, economical reasons, and environmental reasons. Yeah, believe it or not, uh, not having children can save your life and the planet. Yes, it's true. <laughs> okay, um, when you are having children, you lose uh, many opportunities. Sometimes you lose opportunities for your career that, that you want to pursue because you don't have time to take care of your career or your homework or your classes because you have to uh, be with your children or work. So uh, this is harder for female than males, but of course this is a job for two. So even though it's harder for females, men has to work hard for their children too. Um, according to the National Conference of State uh, Legislature, only 40% of teen moms uh, finish high school and fewer than 2% finish college at the age of 30. This means that not even right now you are young and you, uh, you don't finish your, your high school or your co or college, but it will take you more time for you to finish college if you want to have a career. So um, I'm pretty sure that you're thinking it twice before having any relationship with Somebody else? <laughs> Sorry. And also, um, according to the National Dropout Prevention Center, uh, the 25% of girls and the 6.2% of men will drop out of school because, of, because they became parents. So that's how I'm proving that men and women have the same problem with school. Um, so, if you want to have a career, think it twice before having children, because children affect your career and also it will affect your job. If you want to have a good job, you have to have a good degree and a good education, so you can get a good job and good money. So, um, um, many jobs require persons to have a full-time job, and if you don't have time, you will have to either quit your job or put your children in um, with a babysitter. So in my experience, I've been with babysitters all my life, so I really don't recommend you to have your children with babysitters. It will, it's a waste of money, and it's, um, your children will hate you because you don't, you don't have, <laughs> you don't spend time with, with them. Um, when I was little, my mom used to work a lot. I couldn't see her for almost weeks because she needed to go out of other cities. And most of her money was for the babysitter and to pay the bills and my education. Thanks for my mom and I'm here. Thank you, mom. <laughs> and, but think about it. You don't have money for yourself. You have to spend it for your children. And it's very expensive. Children are very expensive today. Uh, according to the CNN, to raise a child born in the 2013 to the age of 18, it will cost me a middle-income couple just over two, $245,000, according to the new, newly released estimate from the U.S. Department of Agriculture. 
And also, if you are lucky enough, and when your children are grown and they can have a scholarship or they can get a good job for to pay their college, but if they're not, you will have to spend like uh, eighteen eighteen thousand dollars to forty one thousand dollars in college just for college. So. I'm sure that with all the money I can buy a luxurious car or I can uh, buy a nice house in California because they're very expensive. Um, now hundreds of babies are born are born each day. So in America, a um, million of babies born and you spend a lot of money to take care of them. So all the money that you spend um, Dependent of resources from the planet, you have to feed them. You have to give a show, give them shelter. You have to give them clothes. So uh, all the money, I mean, all the resources you take in from the environment. Uh, probably you think that what its children have to do with the environment, but it's true. If you spend a lot of money with the with kids, um, you will take a lot of resources from the environment. According to the UNICEF estimates that the average of 353 babies are born each day. So of 353,000 babies will uh, use uh, toilet paper, food, and all those resources. And according to the Huffington Post, 25, 25,000 trees are fallen each day for toilet paper. And also, at least 50 million acres of rainforest are lost every year. So all that, all those trees that uh, helps to provide oxygen for us are being killed every year because of one baby is born. So think about it. You are saving the planet. You are saving your career. You are saving your money. So please don't have babies. <laughs> and really, if you want, if you really want to have children, you have the option of adoption. That it will really help. It will really help a lot of children that don't have any house. And now that it's coming Christmas, um, many of those children won't have any any um, like family to spend Christmas with, or they won't have any gifts because they're a friend, right? Okay. <laughs> <Poor> kids. <laughs> so think about it. So um, I'm pretty, I hope that you will think it twice because this is really helpful for you. And I really, I don't, I don't hate children. I, sometimes. <laughs> but <laughs> I really think that you should not have children, at least right now. Please, thank you. <laughs> All right, Cooper, what did you think? Um, I thought that the speech was uh, really appropriate for the age group um, and the way it was organized and uh, presented were all uh, very good. Um, I thought that uh, the introduction, uh, I thought the um, thought it was good overall, but I think that the story you told in the middle of the speech would have been a better attention getter than the one that you than the one that you used. Uh, I thought the preview was effective. Um, uh, you are very good about citing all your sources uh, throughout the entire thing, and it was all pretty well organized throughout the entire speech. Um, but the plug for uh, adoption at the end was sort of out of place, I thought. 
Uh, not that it isn't a good topic, but because it could be a topic of its own, really. Um, but overall, I thought it was a, a really good speech. All right. Um, I, the, almost everything you said, I was I was going to say, including that last comment about the adoption subject. It's not that it doesn't. It's not even that it's detached from what we're talk, what you're talking about, but it just wasn't at, it wasn't on the horizon at the beginning of the speech. It didn't seem like that's where you were going, and then suddenly it just kind of gets dropped in at the end, like it's you know, a coincidence that you just happen to see. Oh, it's sitting here on the side of the road. There's this issue too. Let me just toss it in here, and I think that kind of is a little distracting there. Now, if you had put it in at the beginning of the speech in the preview and suggested that there are really good reasons for um, limiting having your own children and, and one of those reasons is that we can take care of the kids that don't have appropriate uh, family support. I think that that would have fit a little bit better, but because it wasn't really part of the uh, purpose of the speech, it feels, you know, like I said, tagged on. Um, I thought you did a good job citing all of your sources in the body of the speech. I thought there was an excellent preview at the beginning. Uh, in, the, in the body of the speech, I do think that you need to signpost those transitions a little bit more, but other than that, I thought it, it, it flowed pretty smoothly. There are a couple of places where I think your argument could be a little bit stronger. Um, the argument about the environmental issues, for instance, I don't think is developed as well as it could be. You've got a good example with the trees, but that's about as far as it goes, and we know that they're also going to be eating all those animals, which is bad for the environment, you know, that kind of stuff. Uh, so that, that ought to be coming up, too. And and uh, the expense of having a kid, uh, I, nobody's going to argue with that one. It is expensive having a kid. <coughs> um, so I thought that that was pretty good. One of the things I don't think that you do, though, is cope with what the potential negative consequences are on some of these things. Uh, when you talk about economic issues, for instance, populations that are declining in their birth rates have huge economic issues facing them. And Japan, China, and Western Europe are good examples of this because their economies will not be able to sustain based on the number of people that are living and working there. It's difficult to <coughs> expand if you don't have another group that's coming along to replace the folks that are getting old and dying, you know, that kind of thing. So I, I, I think that your your problem your solution is a little simplistic, uh, but it's you know it's clear that that's the position that you're taking. I just think you need to kind of look at it in the broader perspective. You don't really hate your mother, do you? No. Well, you know, because that's kind of the implication that you made. You know, when you I'm said gonna they're going to leave you, you know, when you get left with a babysitter, you're going to hate your parents. I'm going, hey. and you said, and that's what happened to me, and I'm going. <laughs> Man, she must hate her life. Yeah, I know you. Uh, yeah, I know you had it later on, and you said that she really does love you. If she's watching these videos, you know you should you should make sure that that gets in there. But that's an example of one of those inadvertent things where you're saying something, and then the next thing you know, it's kind of like the thing Taylor did earlier with the the language of compassion. You know, you just inadvertently you might be implying something that you didn't really intend to imply, and that might be setting people off a little bit. All right, thank you.